the difference between the Suzuki method and traditional methods? Keep watching to find out. If we haven't met, hi, I'm Megan. I'm a violinist and teacher currently based in New Jersey. I've been playing the violin for over 20 years. I have my bachelor's and master's degrees in violin performance, and I'm a Suzuki trained teacher. If you're enjoying my videos, please make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. And if you're looking for more support and guidance and more in-depth tips and tutorials, check out my self-paced comprehensive learning platform, Learn Violin Online. I recently got a major facelift and students are loving the changes so far. There are several differences between the Suzuki method and traditional learning methods. Let me start out by saying I don't think there is a one-size-fits-all um, method to learning how to play the violin. I think different methods work well for different kinds of learners. Obviously, I'm a Suzuki trained teacher, so that is the method that I use, and it's the method that I was taught with as well. But that does not mean you can't learn to play the violin at a high level with other methods. So the first and probably main difference between the Suzuki method and traditional methods is the concept of learning to play by ear. This is one of the pillars of the Suzuki method, and in fact, it's really how the Suzuki method was born. Dr. Suzuki had the realization one day that all Japanese children learn to speak Japanese. And if you've ever tried to learn a language as an adult, you know that it is not easy. And how do all children learn to speak their mother tongue? By listening to it by ear. So obviously everyone teaches the Suzuki method a bit differently and it definitely depends on the age of the student and their prior experience, if any. But generally students are taught to play by ear. Um, the way that I do this with my students is I will obviously have them listening to the CD as much as possible, although it's not really a CD anymore, right? It's Spotify or YouTube or something, but I always say CD. <laughs> we will practice hearing if pitches are different or the same from one another, higher or lower from one another. We'll also practice listening for scales and arpeggios. And then in the lesson, I'll play a few notes for them and they will try to play them back to me. Learning by ear is really a process of trial and error, but I think one of the major benefits is that the students can really fo focus on their technique. When you're reading music and also trying to learn just how to play the violin, it's a lot more complicated just because you have a lot more to focus on. I've also found that learning by ear makes memorizing a lot easier. Um, I was a Suzuki student, like I mentioned, and I don't really have a problem memorizing music now, and I'm pretty sure that's because I learned mostly by ear from the beginning. In traditional methods, obviously I'm not as familiar with these, but it's my understanding that you pretty much start reading music from the get-go. Obviously reading music is so important and such a valuable skill to have but it can make it harder to really focus in on your technique. The next difference between the Suzuki method and more traditional methods is the repertoire. So if you are a Suzuki student, you will use the Suzuki books. The reason why I like the Suzuki books is because the pieces are based around learning skills. In each piece, you're either learning a new skill or refining one that you've just learned. Now, these pieces are not necessarily the most well-known or the most melodic, and in fact, in the first Suzuki book, um, the majority of the book, like the first half, or maybe a little bit more, are just like etudes and exercises that were made up by Dr. Suzuki. In more traditional learning paths, you're going to be learning more traditional songs, right? You'll learn things like maybe Mary Had a Little Lamb, or... Hawk Cross Buns or Baba Black Sheep, which is not pieces that you really learn in the Suzuki method. It might be a little bit easier in that sense to learn more traditionally because you are most, you're most—you're more likely to know those songs. And it also might give you a little bit more motivation because you know those songs, you, you want to be able to play them. Now this isn't to say you can't get to know the Suzuki songs. Obviously, if you're listening to the CD like you're supposed to, you will get to know them. The repertoire isn't as common. Now, since the Suzuki method is so ubiquitous, I think the repertoire is becoming more well-known, but it's not very traditional. Another difference between the Suzuki method and more traditional learning methods is the employment of group classes. So for traditional Suzuki teachers and those who teach in a Suzuki school or a Suzuki program, group classes are a huge pillar of learning. They help students learn to play with each other. They inspire students to look at those who are better than them and want to be like them. And they also help the older or more advanced student become role models for the younger or the less advanced ones. 
Group classes are used to reinforce things that are learned in private lessons and can also be a time just to experiment with fun things like learning Christmas songs or playing games or playing um, pieces in rounds. When I was growing up, I did do Suzuki group classes. Um, where I'm at now, I don't run any group classes just because I don't have the space to in here in my house. But group classes are one of the pillars of the Suzuki method and not something that I think are really emphasized in the more traditional learning senses. Another difference with the Suzuki method versus more traditional learning methods is the emphasis on review. So reviewing songs that you've previously played is so important for basically two main reasons. One is to help you advance your technical skills. If you are playing a piece that's you know at your hardest level, you are not really going to be able to think about keeping your bow thumb bent or making sure that your fingers are landing on the right spot, right? Because you're really thinking about those notes. Review songs allow you to focus on those more technical elements and actually help you improve faster. Additionally, with review songs, since you know them so well, you can add more um, complicated or more advanced elements into them. So you can add more dynamics. You can start adding a vibrato or taking more time. When you're not so, so focused on the notes, the easier it is to add these elements into your playing. In more traditional methods, as far as I'm aware, review isn't very heavily emphasized. You basically have one piece that you're working on, maybe some etudes, maybe some scales, that review isn't as focused on. Finally, I think a major difference with the Suzuki method versus more traditional learning methods is the community. The Suzuki students and the Suzuki teachers have such a close bond because none of this is easy. Learning an instrument is not easy. Teaching an instrument to a child is not easy. Being a parent to a child who's learning is not easy. So the Suzuki community really lifts each other up. We have institutes all over the world. We have conferences, we have the Suzuki journal, we have the Suzuki website. And this is not to say that traditional players don't have community because they certainly do. But I don't know of like one single channel where all of the traditional method learners have come to congregate and share ideas and help each other. Do you? Let me know. So those are some of the main differences between the Suzuki method and traditional learning. Did I miss anything? Leave a comment and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe before you go and don't forget to check out Learn Violin Online.